We previously reported that Canon has found a way to reduce dew condensation on their image sensors, but not on their lenses. At least until now. Canon's now found a way to reduce dew buildup on the lens apparatus as well. And if you've been waiting for steep discounts on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II and the Nikon Z8, then stick around because we've got some amazing deals right after we cover the patent information. But for now, let's take a look at Canon patent filing, JP 2024 059457, filed on October the 18th, 2022, and published May the 1st, 2025. In this patent application, Canon claims to provide a lens unit that's capable of suppressing the occurrence of dew condensation. And if you'll recall, I covered dew condensation in patents JP 2024 055316 and JP 2024 05591. Both deal with reducing dew condensation in the image sensor, though it was vague on the type of camera systems, those security cameras were a prime candidate. And in that video where I covered those patent applications, I asked a very simple question. What on earth is the purpose of reducing dew condensation on the image sensor if, of course, you haven't reduced it on the lens? Well, apparently, Canon heard me. JP 2024 59457, the topic of today's video, addresses dew condensation in the lens. Patent document one describes a lens unit that's capable of conducting a leak test on an O-ring. This is achieved by utilizing a hole in the lens barrel to connect the space between the first lens group and the second lens group, both positioned on the image side of the first lens group with the space outside of the lens barrel. Okay, I know what you're thinking. At least some people are thinking, a hole in a lens? That can't be good. That's going to completely destroy weather sealing, right? Well, no, that's not the case. So Ken has found a way to, well, it, it's not, I wouldn't think of it as a hole, but more of a valve to control the flow of air between outside in the environment to that inside the lens. And the patent goes further stating that failure to close the hole may result in dew condensation on the image side of the first lens group due to temperature changes in the usage environment. Conversely, eliminating the hole prevents the air from escaping between the first lens group and the second lens group. This can cause air to repel against the first lens group, making it almost impossible to insert a lens barrel where the O-ring is attached. But as photographers and videographers, anybody that's shooting in, well, hot summer conditions, or even in the winter when you're going from one environment to another where there's a huge temperature change in humidity differences, well, condensation on the lens group and as well as the image sensor is a fact of life. And it's really frustrating, especially for those of us that are birders where your moment is there for a fleeting moment and then it's gone and to have to wait a minute or two for the lens condensation or the dew condensation to go away is really frustrating. But let's go back into the patent application for a few more details on how this works. Canon describes the development of a lens group comprising of the first lens group positioned closest to the object side. A second lens group is situated closer to the image side than the first lens group and the lens barrel supporting both lens groups. The second lens group features a first sealing part that seals between the first lens group and the lens barrel. A lens barrel holder for supporting the lens barrel and an adhesive that bonds the lens barrel holder and the lens barrel together. The lens barrel is fully supported around its circumference without any gaps, and it includes a communication hole that allows for communication between the inside and the outside of the lens barrel. And this communication hole is sealed with an adhesive facing the lens barrel holder. Yeah, I know, these patent applications aren't the easiest to understand, but what they're talking about is a way of reducing the condensation buildup on the lens. And of course, we have a way of doing that on the image sensor as well. And these holes control the airflow to, well, reduce that risk of lens condensation happening, which is, after all, what we want, right? If we can just imagine being able to go out and shoot, you're in your, well, really cold car or your cold house or cold hotel, and you get outside and you get ready to shoot, and all of a sudden, before you go ahead and click that shut button, everything fogs up, and it's really frustrating. But the real question you might be wondering is, will we see these innovations in new Canon RF lenses that are due to be released this year, alongside the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the EOS R1, and other surprise mystery cameras? Well, not if this is the only lens patent application dealing with dew condensation. Did you notice anything about the patent applications? 
notice the construction. The design is more in line with what we would see with PTZ or security cameras, not the type of lenses we'd put in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or any other stills hybrid camera. But that doesn't mean we won't see the benefits of this patent application in other lenses, such as those for the R system, the RF mount, the RFS mount. Because you see, until a couple of days ago, I didn't even know this patent application existed. The only thing we had was solving dew condensation on image sensors, not lenses. Now, this is our first one. And what I've seen countless times when it comes to patent applications is we can see a whole series of patent applications covering a single topic from different viewpoints. And we saw this with autofocus, autofocus improvements that are due to be seen in the EOS R5 Mark II, the EOS R1, and other mystery cameras. That the improved object and subject tracking first came out for security cameras, PTZ cameras, and then we started to see it in stills hybrid cameras. Canon, when they release patent applications or publish patent applications, it's never for to cover everything off. Usually what they'll do is they'll have one patent application for let's say PTZ cameras, another one for security cameras, another one for stills hybrid cameras, and the list goes on. And then we can see multiple patent applications. And what I think is going on here is we're gonna see a patent application that also deals with our system lenses. Because to be able to reduce dew condensation on the lens and on any part of the camera, well, that's huge as photographers. Many of us usually don't have problems going from our house or our hotel out into the environment because by the time we've done that, the dew condensation goes away but en route, in a vehicle, on a bus, and whatever vehicle we're in, then to get outside and want to immediately shoot, that dew condensation can really get in the way. But now it's time to take a look at deals of the week. We've finished covering off the patent applications, and there's some doozies. Canon's been dropping some amazing deals, but, well, now Nikon's gotten into the business. But first, let's cover off the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. A big surprise. This surprised everybody. $500 off the Canon EOS R6 Mark II at B&H in Adorama. And of course, this had me wondering if we're gonna see a refresh, but with 1.5 years before, well, 1.5 years after we had the EOS R6 Mark II announced, that seems a little bit implausible. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below, but there it is, $500 off. And of course, we have $500 off the Canon EOS R5 2899 at Adorama and B&H. And once again, Adorama's tossing in a SanDisk 128 gigabyte CFexpress Type B card along with a card reader, the R5C 3599. But as I alluded to in the introduction, Nikon not to be outdone, they dropped the price of the Z8 by a staggering $500 to $3496. And take a look at this, the Nikon Z7 Mark II 1996, $1,000 off, but they didn't stop there, the D850 is $800 off at $2196. Some really staggering deals, and I just covered off a few highlights right here. I get a sense that not just Canon, but Nikon is getting ready for some major announcements. Maybe the Nikon Z6 Mark III, the Nikon Z7 Mark III, but it's too early for a Nikon Z8 Mark II, isn't it? Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and if you're interested in taking in some of these deals, I do have links down below for all the deals mentioned. I, however, it's important to mention, I do get anywhere from two to 12% back, which goes right back to supporting this channel. It's because of your purchasing these links or purchasing through these links, it really does help this channel grow because it's allowed me to buy the 100 to 500, the 200 to 800, and to pre-order the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. And thank you to everybody that has purchased using my links. If you use these links, you don't have to jump through hoops. It doesn't take you to a strange portal. You don't have to put in any codes. It takes you directly to the site, directly to the page, where you can go ahead and pre-order, well not pre-order in this case, you can go ahead and order, <sighs> you can go ahead and order the Nikon Z8 at these incredible prices, the Z7 Mark II, the EOS R5, the EOS R6 Mark II, and um, yeah, some really amazing deals on right now. So I, I just wanna say thank you to everybody that has used my affiliate links in the last couple of days. Thank you so much, it really makes a huge difference. And, you know, it's amazing, whenever I see a few of these on there, it just, um, it's like a huge boost. I haven't published videos for the last couple of days and for the simple reason was I just got burnt out over the weekend. I there was I covered a, a Canon USA tweet teasing about a new announcement coming this week's something exciting and then they replied to my tweet saying, "Yeah, it's not a product announcement," which was really frustrating because in the image and they still tweeted out another image too showing a lens with all the information um uh, obscured and of course it obscured the camera as well teasing about a camera and it had nothing to do with a camera 
And then just a few days ago, they tweeted out another mystery tweet about how they love videographers. So I don't know what Canon USA is doing with their social media. They're, they're doing these really strange tweets. So I decided to take a break, walk away for a couple of days while I did some investigations. Uh, but I didn't completely abandon production. I've also been working on a review. So where is it here? I've got the Crane 4. I just finished a review on this and published a video about a couple of weeks ago. But there's another video I shot, I've been shooting over the past couple of weeks that I'm hoping to finish within the next couple of weeks. I can't tell you anything about it because, well, it's under embargo and I have to wait. I don't know what the announcement date is going to be. Uh, so I'm slowly working on that and I decided to t take advantage of the last couple of days to finish this shooting. And now I just got to finish with the B-roll and the editing. So I haven't gone anywhere. I'm, I have no plans to stop producing for this channel at any time soon. This is going to be my retirement gig. So if I stop producing for a while, it's usually because some other things have come up or I'm giving myself a bit of a break. But that's it for now. If you do want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest, I do expect some very interesting news to come out over the next couple of days um, by next Monday at the very latest. So subscribe if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest. Uh, but while I haven't been producing any videos, I have been tweeting on X. So you might want to follow me there as well. All those news stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, well, they usually get tweeted out on X. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.